Greetings, Royals. Greetings, greetings. Greetings, greetings, Royals. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are the Royals doing? We are starting early. Greetings, Royals. Greetings, greetings, greetings to you all. How are you doing? I trust you're all doing great. I trust you're all winning, all taking charge. Happy Sunday, Royals. Happy, blessed, beautiful Sunday. We are live on both our social platforms, on Instagram and Facebook, ready for the word, Royals. It's a beautiful time, you know, in the presence of God to listen to the word, receive the word of God and be blessed. And today is word feast, Royals. So before we go there, this is Rati Shalom. I love you also dearly. We are ready for the word, Royals, like we always do every time. You know, we start with gratitude. So we have a lot to be grateful to God for. I would like us to just show some gratitude to our Heavenly Father. We thank Him for being our Heavenly Father, for loving us so dearly, you know, for blessing us with all spiritual blessings, you know, for blessing us with the anointing, for blessing. There's so much to be grateful to God for, Royals. I believe you also have a lot that you're grateful to God for, regards to your family, you know, regards to your business, your job, you know, your finances, and you know, your children, and so on. So there's so much to thank God for. Why are you grateful to God for this uh, a beautiful week, Royals? Let us just go ahead right now before we share the word and show some gratitude to our Heavenly Father. There is so much to be grateful to God for. Go ahead and thank Him. Go ahead and speak in tongues. If you speak in tongues, you know, if it's your, your own understanding, you can also pray, I mean, in your own language, rather. You can also pray and show gratitude to God. Glory to God. Let us just go ahead and thank Him. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for loving us dearly. We are grateful for your word. We are grateful for blessing us. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for our finances, for increased glory. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for protection, for love us dearly we thank you father we thank you for your word that is prevailing in our lives. We thank you, Father, for enabling us. We thank you, O oh God, for renewing our inner man every day. We are grateful to you, O oh God. We are grateful for being our Father. We are grateful for your presence in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful even for these platforms, O oh God, where we are able to share the word, where we are able to receive the word, and be elevated to yet other the level every single day of our lives so god we thank you we are grateful thank you father for your word that we're going to share this morning this afternoon this evening lord it is the word that we need now to take us to another level again lord we thank you we give you praise we honor you in jesus name amen glory to god so that is the power of gratitude royals we all know you know God loves it when we show gratitude to Him. Amen. There's so much to be grateful to God for. I don't know about you, but I have a lot to thank God for every single day of my life. I thank God for increased glory. I thank God for blessings, for my family, for protection, for divine health. There's so much royals that I can actually count on and on just to show gratitude to God. Glory to God. But because of time, you know, we have to focus on the word feast. It's word feast royals. And you know when it's word feast is Bible study. We're looking into the scriptures. We're sharing more of the scriptures. And of course we always share you know the word every Sunday. Every day. Every Sunday is for the scriptures. But you know when it's um, word feast. 
we specifically look at a certain verse a certain chapter we, we we you know we get glued into it and look into it more to share more right so now we have um three scriptures today and i'm hoping that we'll be able to take them all because last time if you remember the last word feast that we had um we shared matthew chapter six word feast is available on our youtube channel you can watch it and be blessed it was a very powerful you know uh chapter that we looked into and it blessed us so much so you can look at it i mean go and listen to the message and be blessed as well glory to god so now apart from that you know last uh week we shared on the source of strength we continued on the source of strength and the other week as well was um the source of strength as well when we were talking about samson we learned a lot uh on uh, samson's story right so we're not gonna look uh, look at that now like last week we also continued on the source of strength sharing more on how do we gain our strength how do we get renewed every single day of our lives and we shared a lot of scriptures you know and we also spoke about joy that we ought to be joyful in the presence of the lord at all times and so on so there was a lot so you can go to our youtube channel and listen to the messages okay so now let's look at today's word feast today's scriptures there's uh one of the scriptures that we're going to look at right now which is jude one there's only jude one right jude 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 it's only jude it's only jude I remember there was a time when I couldn't, um, you know, when I, I had not, I, I didn't have much of the knowledge of the scriptures, you know. So when they say, open your Bibles to what, you know, I would start flipping, flipping, looking. And I remember there was a time my pastor said, open your Bibles to Jude 120. Now I was scrolling, looking for the book of Jude. When I got there, I'm like, Jude 1, this should be, you know. When I looked, I'm like, okay, so it's only Jude. Jude, Jude, like one chapter of Jude. You know, so all these things, they do happen. But we thank God for such, for these kind of platforms. And we thank God as well for going to church. We thank God of, uh, 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 as well for taking our own, our own times, you know, to study the word. So now Word Feast also encourages you and me to understand you know the importance of studying the scriptures the importance of giving yourself time to study the scriptures right so you need to study the scriptures so let's look at the book of jude uh we are not going to take you know so much of the time let's look at jude i'm gonna read the niv version I'm looking at, I don't know what's going on with the, with the network. Let's hope it's not going to cut us off because I see it's a little bit slow. Let's just give it a little bit of time, just a little bit royals. So we are going to take Jude, 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 right? So we will look at the wall of Jude. Like I'm taking the NIV version. And today is word feast, so we're going to be feasting into the word, right? So Jude, go to the book of Jude in your Bible. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. So Jude was a brother of James. To those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy peace and love be yours in abundance so this is the apostle, apostle writing right and then he says the C, uh, uh, this is uh, verse 3 we're on verse 3 now dear friends although so this letter is actually written to you now so you're gonna receive it as it's addressed to you of course because it's addressed to us we are the brethren, right? 
Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. So I, I, I urge you to contend. I urge you to contend, right, for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ only our, our Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. So these are the people that were turning, you know, the, the way backslide, so backslide, or can we use that word? You know, we had decided to turn themselves. Though you already know all this, because there were people that were like that. So it says, though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt. But now, now, now I like this because he's reminding the people. We are being reminded, you know, because sometimes God does good things. No, did I say sometimes? I mean, God does good things, not sometimes. God does good things in our lives. And you know what happens when people start enjoying the blessings and so they tend to forget where they're coming from. They tend to forget their God and they tend to forget that, you know, they were once in, in Egypt. I mean, in Egypt in their lives, financially, spiritually, emotionally, you name it. And then they forget. Let's see. It says, though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one, at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but let it destroy those who did not believe. Let it destroy those who did not believe. There were people that didn't believe and God dis destroyed them. Especially when you talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. But let it destroy those who did not believe and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling. These has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. If you read about the Sodom and Gomorrah, you will see that there were angels that turned, you know, and they began to... to, to you know, the the, the, uh, the devil actually took over, you know, at that time and, you know, things changed there. But I'm sure it was for a purpose, you know. There were angels that began to sleep with men and they there were giant kinds of people that were being, you know, conceived because of that. It says, and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. You know, there were so many people also that were doing all kinds of things, like ugly things. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal life. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies. Pollute their own bodies. Don't be among those that pollute their own bodies. Do all kinds of ugly things that you can think of in your body. So many ugly things that pollute your body. You know, the Bible says that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Like God dwells there. So when God dwells in your body, you can't pollute it. You see, Jesus. In, this, in the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse of celestial beings. But even the unchangeable, the, un, the I mean, the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they 
do not understand and the very things they do not they do understand by instinct as irrational animals do will destroy them so the things that obviously destroys you you know doing all kinds of things that are not even in line with the word of god what do you think will be the consequences will be the end of it it will be perishing you know it will be perishing because when God instructs us with his word, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to live your life. This is what you should, we should do that. So the moment you go off track, you know, before you know it, you lose yourself, lose your life, lose everything. You become polluted, ugly. And of course, you will receive the consequences of not doing things the right way. While to them they have taken the way of Cain, they've rushed for profit into Balaam's era, they've been destroyed in chorus rebellion. Remember Cain? Cain is the one that killed the brother. Right. These people are blemishes, uh, are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest gum. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain. Ooh. Just shepherds who face themselves. Says they are clouds without rain. Imagine if God, if the if the word of God can say you, they are clouds without rain. You know that that when we are, you know, like we are given an example, like we are told, like you know, how do I put this? When the boss, like for example, says that they are clouds without rain. So if as a person. You can reference to a cloud like what does that tell you a cloud they are a cloud without rain so that means we are like clouds we are like clouds you know clouds form and when they form they have to empty the Bible says that when the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves. When the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves. So he said they are like clouds without water. So now the question is, are you a cloud that has water? And how do you know that you have water in your cloud? As a cloud, how do you know that you have water? That's when it takes us back to our lifestyle. The kind of life that we live, the kind of words that we speak, the investments that we make in our lives, in our spiritual lives, and in all other areas of our lives. As you are forming the cloud of your life, what's going to come out? What's going to come out? Says they are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, forming up their shame, wandering stars for who, whom a blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Says forming up their shame. You know, so that's why we need to be careful how we live our lives. Don't be found forming your own shame. Where at the end of your story, at the end of the story of your life, it's a shame. You can change the way you live. You can change the way you do things. You can change, you know, how you, you control things in your life so that you don't end up... Sorry about that. Let me just quickly fix that. That is the network. Let's hope it's not going to distract us. And then it says, There are white waves of the sea forming their shame, wandering, wandering stars for. Okay, we have shared that verse 10 in verse 14. Okay, so we're saying, Let us not be found you know, creating shame for our lives. You know, you can put things, you can 
you know, put your life in order with the word of God so that you don't find yourself, you know, on the wrong side. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness. And all of the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and uh, are fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. They flatter others for their own advantage. So, so, you know, because so the servant from, uh, from Adam prophesied about the sea. The Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge. So you do all kinds of evil. You can't ex think that, you, I mean, think that you will get away with it. You run away. You know, you will escape. You will be judged for it. You will face the consequences for it. And then he says that they boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. There are people who flatter others for their own advantage. For themselves. You know, just to satisfy themselves. To prove things like that. Which brings us back to the question, when you're doing everything that you do, do you do it for God? Or you do it for men. What are your intentions when you're doing the things that you do? Is God involved? Is God part of all those things? Or you are on your mission to accomplish your own personal desires? So we need to watch ourselves in all these areas of our lives. You know. So thank God for Bible, uh, for word feasts. When you know we're studying the, the the word, so you're getting to see that there are people that were punished, there are people that were killed, there are people that God destroyed because of doing all kinds. So don't be one of the people that will be also spoken about, you know, in the history of time and say that there there's also this generation that did this and they were among those people that were destroyed. Let your story end well as a child of God. Let your destiny be, you know, prepared as a child of God. And then it says, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. There are people who follow mere, you know, uh, uh, natural instincts they call them their inner you know the, 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 their instincts like you know you have heard this word like follow your instincts it's not even the Holy Spirit it's not even the Spirit of God that like, follow your instincts they follow their instincts people would divide you you know that people are like that so that's why it's important you need to be careful of the kind of people that you hang around with that those that can be there as much as they look like they're okay, but they'll be there and divide you. Who follow their natural instincts. These are the people who divide you, who follow men natural as natural instincts and do not have the spirit. So they don't have the spirit of God. There are people who follow men natural instincts. They don't have the spirit of God. We we're talking about this earlier this morning, you know, about the, the, the spirit of God. When you are guided by the Spirit of God, the, the, the Holy Spirit makes your life easy. You can listen to the Holy Spirit. You can respond to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can guide you. You know, oh my word, I don't know how I can put this. I don't know how I can put this. There's something special about the Holy Spirit. There's something special, unique, and extraordinary about the Spirit of God at work in a man. It differentiates you from the crowd. It makes things different in your life. 
But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mess of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. So, and then it says, But ye, beloved, that's what King James Version says, it says, But ye, believe, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So that means you are of the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. As you do so, you build yourself. So that means the, the, this word faith is actually teaching us the importance of building ourselves in the Word. Building ourselves and investing into the things of the Spirit. Investing into that which, you know, we will benefit from. Than you getting involved into all these worldly things that at the end will put you into trouble. To where you will perish and that is the end of your life. But you, dear friends, by building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mess of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Because we live in the eternal life already. You have been, I love what, uh, you know, there's um, one of my brothers always say, you know, they were discussing, talking that other time, and like, but I have been saying that Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus, ever since I was born, I, I'm grow, I'm grown like uh, my mother also said the same. They said, now I'm grown and I'm still growing. I just keep hearing that Jesus Christ is coming. Yes, He's coming. We will wait for His time as He comes. But in this time, what we need to do is to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. So when you are preparing yourself, you prepare yourself doing what is right for the coming of the Lord. It says, be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire to others. Show mercy mixed with the uh, with the fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. It says, show mercy. So that means we're winning souls. So that means we're helping others. There are those that are in the dark. You who is in the light, it is your responsibility to also help others. Like for example, we're sharing wet fish right now. We are talking about the word, you know, of course, about the consequences that people faced, you know, during these times and what happened to them. And also sharing at the same time that if you we don't put our lives together, do what is right, you will also fall into those kind of challenges. But you don't want that. So as you put yourself together, put your life together, you also help others put their lives together. So you snatch them from the fire. You snatch them from the hands of Satan. I like what John says, says the violent take it by force. So at this point, you, 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 you have the grace, the ability to go out and take people from darkness to light. That's the winning of souls. Where you do the work that God which has called you for to help others says to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the whole it says to the to the only god of us our savior be glory majesty power and authority through jesus christ our lord before all ages now and forevermore amen so the apostle was writing here it says be merciful to those who died save others by snatching them from the fire to others show mercy so show mercy to others. Do the right thing. Snatch people from fire. Live right. Build yourself in the word. Pray. Study the word. You know, have time in the presence of God. Build your life. Build your spirit. Build yourself. That's what Jude is telling us. It's about the beloved building up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So how often do you pray? How often do you do that? Do you put things together, you know, in your spiritual life? Let's look at John. So we must, we are in the preparation of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But while we are in the preparation, you know, we also help to prepare others. Let's see. Uh, 
uh, First John chapter 1 verse 1. Let's see. It's a very short one. I think we will check this one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our, our, our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. So that eternal life has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. This is the message that we have heard from him. And we declare to you, it's declared to us, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. So God is light. You can't confuse light and darkness. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. So that means if you are in the light, everything about you is light. You can't confuse God with the darkness. And that means you cannot also be in the world and be in, in, in God at the same time. You cannot want to be in the darkness and also want to be in the light at the same time. You have to be. If you are in the light, then you are in the light. If you are in the dark, just know that there are consequences of the dark, of the darkness. And the consequences of the darkness is perishing. So there's eternal life for us as God's children. Everything that we do, going to church, studying the word, praying, like Judas said, doing all the things is for the preparation, you know, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the meantime, we're not playing. You are fulfilling your purpose, living your life right, winning souls, helping others, snatching them from the devil, making sure that you are doing that which you are called to do. There are people that are specifically chosen by God that they will only be changed by you. So imagine if you do not do anything about those people. They are, you are accountable for those people. So you do your part. Go out, win souls, do what you have to do. Snatch people from fire and also live right in the word. And it says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we, pro if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. So if you claim I'm a child of God, but you still live in the dark, you are a liar. You can't say, I go to church, I'm a child of God, you know, I'm, I'm prayerful, but you're still in the dark. One way or the other, there's some things that you're doing that are of the darkness. You lie. You are not in, in, in the light. You are in the darkness and you will face the consequences of the darkness. But when you say you, it says we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So once you are born again, you've given up your life to Christ, you live right. You, you have the eternal life. You are automatically washed. There's a remission of sins. You are washed away of, of all your, 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 your dark, darkness, lifestyle, and so on. Now that you are in the light, you live it an eternal life. There's no condemning yourself. There's no this. You are in the light. You are of the light, right? And then because of the blood of Jesus Christ that purified you, you don't qualify to be in the dark again. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us and our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out of to be a liar and his word is not ours. So if you have sinned, there is an opportunity. If you are a sinner, you have been sinning. The opportunity is to receive Jesus Christ as a personal savior. And if you are born again as a child of God, you find yourself in trouble, you find yourself doing all kinds of things. There has the, the, there's a correction of where you have to be in the word. Find yourself in the light of the word of God. 
correct your life, you know, and be forgiven from all the dirty things that you have done. That those that may have backslided, maybe you are listening, you are watching, and you turned your back. You know, you're like, you know what, this church thing is not it ain't working, and and so on. The church thing works. You are the one that needs to put yourself together. The church thing works. Church is not boring. I always tell people that it's nice. It's enjoyable. But you need to, you know, put your life together. So let's see if we can, um, we need to round up right now. We are rounding up. We are rounding up. So this is this is the apostle talking. Peter and the apostle of Jesus Christ, First Peter one one, to God's excellent exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Portus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bith uh, Bithynia who have been chosen according to the knowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his, his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. So as you give a love to Christ, you are given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the purpose of Jesus dying. And into an inheritance that can never be that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This is the inheritance that can never fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of, of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than God which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So the challenges are for the glory of God. Though you have not seen Jesus Christ, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not know, you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, stretched intently and with a great care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that will follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you, you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he you 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 sorry he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I'm holy. So we are being told, be holy. Okay, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impatiently, live out your time as foreigners here in fervent fear. So live like a foreigner here on earth. Because it's just for a while. It says, leave out your time as foreigners. It says verse 18, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life heading down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood 
of Jesus uh, of, of Christ a lamp without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and saw your faith and hope are in God. Your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Glory to God. So this one, you can actually take time to study it yourself. I thought we should just take it since it was already written. So basically, it's all about our salvation. Glory to God. About our salvation. Our salvation. Live right. Do things right. Live a purposeful life. You know. Stay in the word. And apart from that, snatch others also from the darkness to light. You can't live your life anyhow. You can't be mixing things. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. No. God is light. So be of the light. Glory to God. So if you are watching me right now and you are not born again, excuse me, you don't have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe as we're sharing you're like, you know what? I'm one of those people that I think when I'm looking at my life at the end, it's perishing. You know, you can give your life to Christ. I would like you to lead you with this prayer of salvation right now so that you can be born again. Okay, so the Bible says in the book of Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, says you will be saved. So all you need right now is to give your life to Christ and say this prayer after me. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this day. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal savior. Thank you for washing away my sins. Thank you for dying for my sins. Today, I declare and say I am born again. I'm a new creation. I'm your child in Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you've said this prayer, you are born again. See, we have snatched you from darkness to light. Glory to God. So now that you are born again, you can't live in the old. You can't live your life like the rest of the world. You are a child of God now. You need to put your life together. Put your things together. Live a purposeful life. Live for Christ. And live holy. Be holy because God, your Father, is holy. Praise the Lord. So for the rest of us as well, all of us, you know, we need to take time. Go and study by yourself. Jude 1, 1 John 1, 1, 1 Peter 1, 1. Study those script, three uh, uh, books, chapters, verses by yourself. Understand them because we might not share like everything like here because of time and so on. And also, you know, you need to understand the word for yourself. So the purpose of Word Feast also is also to remind us the importance of studying the scriptures. So we have studied the word. You understand that, you know, what? as a child of God, there's a way to live. We are in the preparation. This is for the eternal life. So there is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when he comes, when he comes, will he find you in the right direction? Will he find you in the right path? Will you be doing right? Will you also be helping others? So it is our responsibility to stay in the word, to live right, fix our lives, make sure that we are serving our, own, our one and only true God. And we help others also. Don't be selfish. Enjoy this salvation yourself. Help others. Go and win souls. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Let them have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the word that we have received this morning, this afternoon, this evening. 
Thank you, Father, for blessing us with your word. Thank you, O oh God, because as we live our lives, we live to please you. We thank you, Father, that as we study the word, we understand, we receive it, and it works for us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that because we are the children of the light, we bring others to light as well. Thank you for giving us the ability to go out and win souls. We thank you, Father, for giving us the increased grace to do things the way we should as you instruct us. We thank you, Father, for as we live our lives, we live as examples for Christ. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for preparing us for eternal life. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this blessed new week. As we started, we started with greatness. We started with winning mindset and we win throughout the week. Thank you for our week is blessed. Everything that we touch is blessed. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So that is all for today, Royals on Word Feast. I hope you were blessed, you were inspired, and you are ready to live right and also help others live right as well. Be a helper in your community. Be your, a helper in your nation. Be a helper in this world. Live right. Understand why you are here and live a purposeful life as an exemplary, as a disciple for our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. That is all for today. I love you also, dearly royals. I hope you were blessed by today's word feast. Go home on your own, study, you know, take some time to study the scriptures and be blessed. God bless you. I love you also dearly. Like I always say every time, stay blessed, stay connected, stay in the word of God. Don't move an inch away from the presence of God. Remember, God is light and you are that light. Glory to God. And it's our year of increased glory. As we study the word, stay in the word. We grow and glow and increase every single day. God bless you. See you again next Sunday. For now, I'm out. <laughs>